From the county of Nyeri, I am Carol Nderi, and this is KT News. Welcome to this particular segment of KTN Weekend Prime. Tonight we don't have the men behind power, but we, ha we have the women who want to be in power. I have with me the aspirant for Migori governorship, Mrs. Ann Anyanga, who wants to be governor of Migori. I have with me also Ms. Winnie Kaburu, who wants to be governor of Meru County. She wants to uh, face off with the gentlemen who are battling for that particular seat and she believes now in 2017 she has what it takes to go for the governorship. Remember in 2013 she was the running mate for Professor Oleki Yapi. This time she says she wants it all. Mrs. Anna Nyanga, uh, some of you might recognize that name. She was almost on the ballot in 2013. She wanted to be governor of Migori County. She got you got that right. She got the ODM ticket to run for Migori governorship, but a mysterious phone call came two hours before she gave her ticket to the IEBC, telling her to hand over that ticket to someone else who went ahead to lose to Governor Okoth Obado in 2013. So let's start from the obvious question. Why? Let's start with you, Mrs. <laughs> Anyanga. Why do you want to be governor of Migori County? Thank you very much. I want to be governor of Migori County because I want to change the lives of the people. The people there are suffering so much and uh, help doesn't seem to be trickling down to them. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to reduce poverty quite drastically. Everybody says that. Mm. I want to change the lives of the people. Mm. But there's a very common line that has been around for almost 70 years. It mm -hmm. says every government has let down all the people all the time. What is it that Mrs. Anna Nyanga will do differently so that Atieno in Migori, Wairimu in Migori, mm. will feel that this is a different governor than the ones we've had before, that, than, than the one we've had in the last five years? Thank you. In my government, I will create for my people opportunities. I will open windows and doors for them so that, so that they are able to participate in these opportunities and be able to earn a living for themselves. That's exactly what I'll do. I'll teach them how to fish. We'll come to the how. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Kaboru, you were on Professor Kiyapi's ticket in 2013. Mm -hmm. You never made it. Now you want to be governor. Why? Um, I believe being a Linda, you are always a Linda. 2013 was uh, a great time for us. We went the whole country. And uh, I learned a lot. And uh, coming from Meru, I realized that uh, I should also give the same leadership which I wanted to give to Kenyans as a whole to my own people. Because Meru is a great country, rich in resources, but uh, the leadership is uh, um, not there. And I feel I'm the right person to, fight, to, to unite all the leaders in Meru. What, is, what do you think you have mm. that will bring that leadership that you say is missing mm. in the Meru governorship right now? I have been, uh, I've had an opportunity to work with quite a number of those leaders, and um, I think they are great leaders. But the problem is there's a lot of, uh, you know, competition. They, all of them want to become governors. They want to have the leadership, forgetting that the, the leadership and the people at the, uh, in, in the ground want to be helped to, uh, to have their resources used in a good way that it benefits them. So I feel I'm the right person who can be able to unite all Meru's because we are rich in resources. We have been taken for granted simply because the leadership is not there. And because I am been a leader nationally, I've been in business for many years, and uh, I think I can be able to bring Meru's together. You know, uh, Meru is not just one big mass. It has got different 
um, um, different uh, co constituencies with different uh, resources. And these resources, if they are well managed, I think the people of Meru would go very far. What is the one thing, uh, before we go back to Mr. Sanyanga, what is mm -hmm. the one biggest thing that you think you can grab onto the first 100 days of your governorship in Meru, if you get it, and transform the lives of the people there in such a way that they'll never forget that Mrs. Winnie Kaburu was governor of Meru County. When I get to the leadership of uh, Meru, when I become the governor of Meru, I will be able to take all, to, to, to be able to sit down with all the people from Tigania, Imenti, uh, Igembe, Ntonyiri, and it, sit down with them to check out what would, uh, how to get the market for, especially Mira, for their um, uh, coffee. You know, leak, have the leakages in these markets. Also, be able to know what what can what what value can be added to these uh, products which they have, so that they can get more money. We have a lot of youth. Many people are very learned, youth without jobs. And they are just being, you know, taken round and round and round. These are the youth I want to sit down and be able to help them to get the resources which are there for their own good. So in the hundred days of my leadership, Merus will see a real change. Business will be flourishing. I will bring quite enough uh, investors to invest there. We have good soil, good water. You know, we, we are a rich place. Only that. We'll get back to yeah, that. Sure. Mrs. Sanyanga, I want to ask you a question which might prove quite emotional for you. Mm -hmm. um, you believe, because there are some, uh, I mean, we have to accept that there are some counties in Kenya where the election is won at the primary, not in the mm -hmm. general election. Mm -hmm. You get a ticket and you have won. People expected that to happen in Migori County in 2013. People mm. thought, you have an ODM ticket, you're the governor before the general election is held. Mm. You got that ticket, you held it for a few hours, then you were told to give it over to someone else. Mm. How did that make you feel at that moment? After that phone call, after those few minutes of that phone call, what was going through your heart and your mind? Well, I must admit that this is very painful. It was very painful, but I'm over that now. That pain that I felt at, at that time has helped me a lot. Whenever you are in so much pain, then you come up with new ways. You learn to be more human. And now I'm more in touch with humanity because what, of that what, what, pain. What, what, what are you going to do this time round to ensure that that phone call, if it comes again, doesn't break you? No, no, it doesn't always happen like that. And even that time, it didn't happen in bad faith, you know. My party is very promising, and it supports women leadership. This is the ODM party? Yes, the and ODM you're party. On ODM again. And I'm running on the ODM party, mm -hmm. because my party is very good. It supports women leadership. It only happened at that time. You see, things happen sometimes that nobody expects them to happen like that. Not that they are against women. No. The, the gentleman you beat in the primaries mm. uh, in ODM in 2013 mm. defected and won, yes. okay, in the PDP, yes. mm. and now he's back to the same party where you're seeking a ticket. Do mm -hmm. you see yourself beating him again this time for that ticket? Oh, for sure I will. This time round I will. You see, what happened at that time, people didn't know what the governance position was all about. Even people in ODM were not committed to being ODM to ensuring that they get a, an ODM candidate to be the governor. But now everybody knows very well and know, everybody knows better. Yeah, people are more informed. Yes. That's, that's a pregnant answer and we'll come and <laughs> deliver it when you come okay. from the break. But before we go to the break, ma'am, yeah. in, in, in just uh, a minute and a half, mm. uh, there are regions in this country where party and who, whom you support for the presidency particularly they determine whether you make it or not. Mm -hmm. Who is backing you up? Which party are you running on and why? Um, that's a very good question. I expected it because uh, 2013 I was in a different party and now I'm running on our DM ticket. I think that surprises you. Very much. Meru has changed. We are not the same people who have been stepped on you know, for years and years. 
we have opened our eyes. We have looked and said that we have been told, go on, go on. We will just go and pick those, uh, those uh, votes when, when time comes for voting. People have changed. We have got very many youth who are learning. We have got very many business people who have gone outside Meru. And they know now it's the leadership we want. And we want to bargain for what we give. Our votes are not just that cheap. You not just don't come and pick them anytime you feel like. So HONDM, which is the alternative government from Jubilee, is on the ground. And the people, I, I used to be in ODM before I joined the Professor Lekiapi. And I am one of the people who started ODM in Meru. And now that ODM has grown. It's a giant now. There's a gentleman in Meru who's yes. left ODM saying mm. that it is the wrong party in that region for no, this time. that is wrong. And that is, you know what, I come from Meru. I was in Meru a week ago. And I went around four constituencies. They are all singing opposition. They don't want to hear in Jubilee. Because Jubilee has done nothing. Really? I mean, votes are gold for people. If we, the Yungi people vote and that government doesn't give you anything, mm. surely. Unless people have no brain, and I think Imeru people are very brainy. So they are going to choose the alternative government, mm. which is ODM, because they want to realize their dream. 